All right, Shalom. Giving all praises, all glory, all honors unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rukakudash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and best to the hopeful elect. Uh, this is the brother Tazai Warren from Jim Mess Atlanta. Back with another edifying video. Uh, I'm on my new laptop set up. Uh, a little bit more easier and convenient to show the screen on the computer sometimes. Um, so little when I can do this more often instead of just using my phone. But anyway, today, so I want to go into uh, a lesson into the name of Yahawashai or the name of the, the true name of who the world calls Jesus Christ, who we know uh, us, Hebrew, us Hebrew Israelites, uh, those of us that were taught by the men that came out of the New York school at One West, we know the true name of the Savior, the Messiah, Jesus Christ to be Yahawashai. Okay? And So I did a previous lesson on the name of Yahweh and how to truly pronounce the name of the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh. Okay? Not Jehovah, not Yahuwah, not God. But when you do the research and you study the different languages, uh the different dialects of the people that speak these these tongues, these languages that have been around for millennia uh, from the the ancient Hebrew to to now us regaining the ancient Hebrew language, the true pronunciation of the name of the heavenly Father is Yahweh. Okay, you can check out that video on my channel page. It's recent, I did about a month ago. Um, so anyway, uh, so this lesson today will be on the name of the Messiah, the true pronunciation of that name. And the different scholars, they know the name of the Lord, okay? They understand that there's no J's in the ancient Hebrew language. They understand when certain letters, like the letter V, came about. Uh, they understand these things. But it's the devil's job to confuse the people and make it hard to get the pathway, to get through the pathway of the truth. But through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we regain the true names of the Heavenly Father and His Son, starting with uh, the Elder Priest Abba Bivens, to those that he taught, King Masha, High Priest Yaqua, High Priest Arya, uh, those they taught at the ICUPK or the ISUPK. Uh, so, um, well, first and foremost, I, I must say the Apostle Tahar uh, and the Apostle Kabar, Apostle Rakar, Elder Big Gad, Apostle Ramla, and different bishops, uh, a great millstone from the, you know, the school in Connecticut to the house of David, you know, that whole lineage of men that were able to keep the pure truth, the 100% truth, okay, and not get 501c3s and sell out or, or you know, get confused along the way. That didn't make merchandise of the, the the followers 
especially in this YouTube age. So we were blessed to, you know, gain the name of the Lord. Okay. So, you know what? This is what I want to do. I have this scripture pulled up, but uh, let me, um, let me just, uh, Uh, let me see here. Uh, where was I at? Okay, let me go back. Okay. Okay, I guess I somehow clicked the other tools off but anyway but before this i want to go into get a scripture i want to go to the blue letter the blue letter bible and i want to get another precept i believe it's in the book of zephaniah no let me see turn to the people of pure language yeah, okay, Zephaniah 3 and 9. Right, Zephaniah. So this is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 9. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may call upon the name of the Lord, Yahweh to serve him with one consent. And when you go into the Hebrew language, okay, without these Masoretic vowel points, because they don't know how to pronounce the Hebrew fully. Uh, when you go into it, you see the pure language here. You see these different Hebrew words, you know, name. And you see that the name of the Lord is Yahweh. Okay? Yahweh. So, when we come into this truth, we aren't given the names of God and Jesus Christ. For number one, God is not a name, it's a title. Satan can be a God if you worship him. Human beings can be a God if you worship them. So when you say God, you have to specify. There has to be a defining proper name for your God, like the Apostle Kabbalah went into. And then when it comes to the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, that is an English, an, an English iteration of the Greek word Jesus. All right? And I'm going to show that in a second. And Christ goes back to the Greek word Christos. And we know that the son of the Most High was not Greek. He was a Hebrew. So I'm pretty sure Joseph and Mary, being Hebrew Israelites themselves, would not give their son a Greek name. Neither being at that time uh, with Jerusalem subject to the Roman Empire, neither would they give their son a Latin name. See, this is why you got to know history. You have to know the history. You can't be a teacher of the Bible and not know the history of the scriptures and the history of the ancient world. That goes for your Christian church pastors, your Muslim imams, um, your, your Mormon elders, your, your Catholic cardinals. If you don't know world history, you can't be a teacher of the Bible. No way. You definitely can't be a teacher of the Bible if you're a woman. You're not to give, get uh, authority over a man. Now, you can teach scriptures to your children, teach scriptures to, if you're an older woman, you can teach the younger sisters, per Paul. But as far as having the authority of the Holy Scriptures to teach men, as Paul said, Women don't have the authority to teach. But anyway, the Greek language was not the language of the Israelites in Jerusalem. 
So the name that Joseph and Mary were told to give to their son was a Hebrew name. So now let me go to see here. Now I'm recording my screen. So let me move this down so I can get to these tabs. Okay. So now let's go to the scripture. Matthew, the first chapter. I'm going to get straight to the point. This is under the conception and birth. Now, you notice it, it doesn't say the immaculate conception because there is no immaculate conception like the Catholic Church and the, and the Protestant Christian churches teach. Okay. The Savior was born from the sperm of a man into the the egg of the womb of a woman, you know, from my ovaries. Just to tell the truth on that. So the conception and birth of, it says Jesus here, but I'm gonna show you his name is Yahawashai and how to pronounce it truly as Yahawashai, okay? You have to go into these languages, all right? So now, uh, I'm getting straight to the point here. This is Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. It says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Every man and woman has a, a people a race and a nation that they're born into. No matter what country, you know, what landmass they're born, they have an ethnic group that they are born into. They have a race, they have a family line and lineage. They have a heritage and customs that they are born into. Reading the Bible, you should understand that in this story, the Messiah is born into the family of the Israelites. Okay? It says, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. The Israelites have prophets. This isn't talking about the prophets of the Orientals, the Moabites and the Ammonites. Uh the East Indian Hindu prophets. This isn't talking about those prophets. The prophets are Hebrew Israelites. So that's the context. So you can't apply what's going on in the Bible and in the New Testament to every race and people on the planet. It's not their story. It's not their family. You can't apply what happened with the Jackson family, with the, um, the Osmonds. What happened with Donnie Osmond and his family didn't happen with the Parkinson's family. Didn't happen with the Jackson's family. Michael Jackson is not a part of the Osmond family. All right. Or, or like I said, the uh the Osmonds. So what we read about in the Holy Bible has everything to do with the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who are Hebrew Israelites. Jacob's name was changed to it to Israel. His forefather was known as Heber or Eber or Ibar. Okay. So now when you go into this name, right? Matter of fact, let me continue reading. It says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. This virgin, when you go into the Hebrew, into the prophecy, is speaking about a young woman. The Greek language did not translate the word for a young woman from the Hebrew and to a young woman for the New Testament in the Greek. It should say, behold, a young woman shall be with child. That's all it means. No immaculate conception here. And the blue letter knows that. It's just a conception. 
the scholars are learning because the Hebrew Israelites are on these platforms teaching the truth. So it says, a young woman shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name, which it's his, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which Emmanuel is not a name. The Hebrew word Emmanuel is I'm Nawa Allah. I'm, I'm Nawa, which means with us, Allah is power. The power is now with us. Who? Nawa meaning us, meaning the Israelites. The Heavenly Father sent his Holy Spirit into one of our brethren to dwell with us, to teach us, which being interpreted is God with us. So this is a Hebrew phrase. It's not a name, okay? Although it is a name in, in English now, you know, you can name your son Emmanuel, which is a beautiful, a beautiful name. But this wasn't to be the name of the son. As you can see, they said that his name would be Yahawashah. Okay? But this is just rendered from the prophecy. And you have to interpret the Hebrew language. This is why the IUIC goes off. When they say, the, you know, the name of the Messiah is the Christ and Jesus, well, interpret it. What does it mean? Which it says here that he shall save his people. So his name means he shall save. He saves or he delivers. And I'm going to get into it. It says, then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not. It should say knew her not again. Right? But he took his wife and knew her not again till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Yahawashah. So let's get into the name of the son, which says Jesus, okay? And do I have it up here? Okay, no, that, uh, that's, okay, I know what that is. All right, so let's open this up. Let's go into the Greek language. So the name is Iesus. Okay. Now, Iesus, which when you look over here on the left, Iesus in the Greek is the etymology, which means the root word of truth is of Hebrew origin. Remember, we're dealing with Hebrew Israelites, okay? So they translate his name from the Greek, Iesus, which comes from the Hebrew origin of Yahweh Shawai, which is close. And it says here, English, Joshua. So his name in English, so really his name should be Joshua, all right? So if IUIC wants to be so um, adamant on speaking the English, well, the English says that his name is Joshua. So let's go into Joshua. What oh, is this, a new window? Yeah, I don't want a new window. Let me close this out. So let's go to new tab here. So they have this here is in the Hebrew. Now they pronounce it as Yehoshua. Yaha. So, but this is actually pronounced Yaha Wa. Shawai, okay? But this also is not the true name of the Messiah. This is uh, misleading, okay? Because they translate this as Yahweh is salvation. 
that's not what his name means. Remember, we just read that his name means, okay? Let me go to Matthew 1 and 21. He shall save. He shall save. Not because if it was, if it was Yahweh shall save, his name would be Yeshaya or Isaiah. Okay. That's a closer. That's close. Yahweh and Yeshai. Yeshai means to save, and Yah is Yahweh. Okay. For Isaiah. That's not his name. His name is Joshua in the English. It means he shall save. Okay. Now, in the previous lesson that I did, I went into the name of the Heavenly Father. So this is Exodus uh, 6 and 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Yahweh, was I not known to them. Okay, so his actual name, his name, my name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Okay, now when you go into the name of the Heavenly Father, and I pointed this out before, in the Hebrew, they have it pronounced as Yehovah which is close. Yehovah is, is, is closer than Jehovah, okay? But this is Yahweh, okay? And once again, this is a, this is two words in one. This is a compound word, a compound name, okay? The beginning character, Yah, is one word, which means he. And then the last three characters is Hawa. I'm going to show you that. So when you go into, I got it on Google here, the meaning of the character Yah, okay, it takes you to the, he, the ancient Hebrew Yad. But the word for Yod, Yod actually means hand. So the character itself can, in order to create the word Yod or Yod, if they have it here, you would have to add, add the Hebrew character Da. So that's two characters. You want to know the meaning of the one character, Yah. Okay, then you have Da. Yah and Da which make yod, which means hand, okay? So now when you go into the meaning of the character yah, all right, let me see, do, do I have it up? Right. So yah or yod, biblical Hebrew study dictionary, right? the Hebrew character Yah. And these are all multiple different words that have the letter Yah as the beginning character. Okay? So now I'm going to show you something. Right, remember, so Yod means hand. Yod can't be the same, it, it cannot be the same pronunciation as the character. These are two separate characters, okay? So the Yah at the beginning of a Hebrew word, that character, right? Yahweh, name of God means he, okay? He. So Yah by itself means he. And then the rest of this 
is exists. But now, see, they have Haya, Haya. But we know that his name is Hawa. Haya is like a root of Hawa, which means be, like to be. But the Lord, the Most High, didn't use Haya, Yahaya. Like you have the uh, GOCC Israelite group. They say the name of the Lord is Ahaya. Okay. Going into I am what I am or I be what I be. But his name is Hawa, not Haya. Hawa means exist. Okay. And then they have the name down here, Joshua. Remember, we just looked up what the Lord's name, Yahweh Shai, the Savior's name meant in the Greek and then into the English is Joshua. And this is the name right here. But we know that the Yah at the beginning of a Hebrew word means he. Okay? See, the scholars know. You just have to dig deep and break it down. Okay? So Yah means he. Okay, so now we have to figure out what the rest of this means. How was how was I? How was I? That's how you would pronounce that, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay, so I just wanted to explain really, yeah, it, it's just that the, the name of the Messiah is underneath the name of Yahweh, which explains the he, okay? So now going back, right? Yah, at the beginning, is he, which takes you to the root, which is Haya. See? Haya. They actually have this pronounced right. Haya which Haya means to be, become, come to pass, exist, right? But that's not the characters for the name of the Heavenly Father. The characters for the name of the Heavenly Father is um, is a Wa there, okay? In fact, Let's see. Yeah, Y H W H. So that's a Yah Ha Wa Ha. So it can't possibly be what I just showed you with the Yah. But when you come down here to a more primitive root, you get the correct word. Okay? which is ha wa ha now they pronounce ha wa ha as hava okay hava now understand the same characters are found in the name of of the messiah okay when you go into matthew 1 right um, and did I get this? Let me see. Right, I went into Joshua, right? So these characters, Yah, Ha, and Wa, are the same three characters in the name of the Messiah. Now I'm going to show you where Wa is not pronounced. Hawa is not pronounced Hava. There's no V sound in the Hebrew language so I, I gave you ya now let me give you this okay so i went to the meaning of hawaha the meaning and they gave you the definition which means to breathe or to be in a sense of existence which that's the correct meaning so now Let's get 
what it actually means. Okay. So when you look up, when you look up, it takes you to Haya, right? And then it tells you the different variants of to be, be, exist. So we have to pick out which one corresponds to the name of the Lord that he gave Moses. So it's not Haya, and it's not this here. So they said the Hebrew language knows one root of the form Haya and two of the form Hawa. So this is, let me see if I can zoom, because this is a little small. Say anything. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so this should be better. So this is actually pronounced. So I told you the scholars know. Hawa, okay, it's pronounced Hawa, okay. There is no Va in the Hebrew. So you got to go, like you can go into the Blue Letter Bible, which is good because it gives you the definitions and different dictionaries, things like that, but there's other there's other applications and sites as well that that get um that get into it a little deeper into the language. So his name is actually Hawa. So when you put together the pronunciation of the Yah, right, that I went into. Uh, let me see here. Right? Yah, meaning he. And then going back here. Right? So you have the Y, the Yah, Hawa. So that's how you pronounce the Heavenly Father's name. So there's no Jehovah or no Yahuwah. It's not Hua. There's no U sound or no V sound in the Hebrew. Now, before, I believe in the lesson I said there's no vowels in the Hebrew language. There's no vowel characters uh, as far as, no, I'm sorry, there are vowels. What I meant to say is um, there are there are no the the vowel sounds that we have in English are not the same as the vowel sounds in the Hebrew, all right? But you do have the vowel character. You do have vowels. The ah is like a vowel. The I is a vowel. It's, it's, it's like a vowel as well. But there's no V and there's no E sounds. There's no U sounds in the Hebrew. You're pretty much going to say ah or I in the Hebrew language. So here, and then when you look down, we have the older BDB theological dictionary, the roots. What do you see here? You see the HWH. So you have the Y, which is Yah. The HWH is pronounced Hawa. But see how there is no vowels here, because this is dealing with the tetragrammaton, the Hebrew characters, Y-H-W-H. But how is, how is the, but what vowel sounds are there? Hawa. Okay. So now, man, I don't need this. So now, when you go to right, the name of the father, you know that this is Hawa. Okay? And I didn't mean to break down 
the name of the Heavenly Father, actually, but I have to. I have to in order to break down the, the correct pronunciation of the name of the Savior, okay? So the Yah, the Ha, and the Wa, and the H is, is the Ha sound is also with the N, but it's still Yahawah, okay? Not Yahawah, that's not his name neither. Those are just the characters. Yahawah are the characters, but it's pronounced Hawa, Yahawa. Okay? So now going into the name of the son, Yahawashai. Okay? We have to go to Joshua. Okay? Because now here it says you have variant spellings for this word, which is Yahweh Shawai, which is what they initially gave us. And you also have Yahweh Shai. All right? Yahweh, right? Remember, we just went over it. Yahweh. Yahweh. Now we have to get the pronunciation of the last two characters. Okay? Well, see, now they broke this down, the definition of the name of the Lord, the Savior, is Joshua, okay, meaning Jehovah is salvation, but that's not what that means because we just gave the understanding that the Yah character is he, okay, he. So this means he, Hawashai, he, Hawashai. So now we have to get an understanding of what Hawashai means. So when you take these characters here, take off the Yah character and get these next characters. Okay, matter of fact, let's go to, well, this is Joshua. This is Joshua, okay? This is Joshua. All right, but now Joshua's name, this isn't Joshua's, this Joshua here, all right, that was with Moses, his name was not Joshua at first. So this is how we're going to narrow down the correct name from Yahweh Shawai and the other variant. Yahweh Shai without the Wa in the in between the Shai and the I. Okay, so we have the first three pronunciation. We have the first three characters in the right pronunciation, Yahweh. Okay, and then we're going to get the last characters. All right, so now let's go to Joshua. Uh, let me see here. Let's see if I have it up. So you know what? Let me do this. Let's go to, what did I just have? Okay, so now let's go to Joshua. All right, type in Joshua. So, Okay, now this is Joshua the first, but this is not the first time. I want to just look up the word Joshua. Verse of words. Yeah, I just want Joshua. I don't want the book. Okay, I know what Joshua, son of Nun. Okay, here we go. Joshua, the son of Nun. That goes into Joshua. But before his name was Joshua, his name was Hosea. Let me get that. Let me pull that up. All 
All right, so this is Deuteronomy 32 and 44. I'm trying to find a scripture where you changed his name. Bear me one second. And I'm not going to be too much longer after this. Okay, so now let me go to Numbers 13. So this is Numbers 13. Okay, here we go. So it says, these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called O'Shea, the son of Nun, Jehoshua, or Joshua. So his name was O'Shea at first, okay? Or how was I? So now when you go into his name, his original name, his family name, it takes you to the word how was I? Okay. How was I? All right. All right. And then take you to the scripture of the tribe of Ephraim, O'Shea, the son of Nun. Okay? So it says Hosea or Hosea or O'Shea, which means salvation, right? Salvation or deliverer. Okay? So this was his name. All Moses did was add the Yah in front. So he changed his name from just meaning salvation to he is salvation, okay? And when you look at the, the, the definition for Hosea, it takes you to Hawashai, which means deliverer, okay? So his name just meant deliverer, and then Moses changed his name to he deliverer, okay? He deliverer. So going back to the correct pronunciation or the correct uh, the correct name, right? Where it took you to Yahweh Shawai is not Yahweh Shawai because that's not Joshua's name. His original name was Hawashai, and then Moses put the Yah in front of him. So it went from deliverer to he deliverer, from salvation to he salvation or he savior, right? He saves, not Yahweh saves, he saves. So the blue letter broke this down wrong, okay? So now that we have Ha, wa, correct with the ya in front of it. We have to now go to what does the character Sha mean? Okay. Oh, let me get this here too. So this is the word. Hosanna, right? Now, when you go to the scriptures, right? Hosanna into the Gospels. Uh, let me see here. I could choose either one of them. So this is uh, Matthew 21 and 9. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Uh, let me read Matthew 21, 15. And when the chief priests and scribes 
saw the wonderful things that he did, talking about the Savior, the Messiah, Yahweh, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. So when you look up this word Hosanna, it tells you that it is of Hebrew origin, which is Yeshai, which we know to mean save, deliver, help, uh, rescue, and Na'ah, which means uh, uh, pray, save, or it really means save us, which it should be Hawashai Nawa. Hawashai Nawa. Oh, save or save us. Or it really means deliver us. So when you go into the strong and the Thayer's lexicon, it takes you to the Hebrew word. It says, in form, the word seems to be the Greek reproduction of an abbreviated pronunciation of the Hebrew. Hawashai Na'ah, or Hawashai Nawa. Okay? Deliver us, deliver us, save us, deliver us, Hawashai. So the Israelites were telling Yahawashai to deliver him. This is the deliverer. Okay? Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord Yahweh, which Yahawashai had the spirit of his father. All right. He he had the gospel, the words of his father. Okay. So Hawashai. That's deliver, the deliverer, right? So I wanted to bring that out. So now let's go into what the Hebrew character Shah. Okay. So you have the letters and their meanings. So as you can see, in all the characters, you have a ba ga da ha wa za cha sound cha ta ya. We broke down what that means. Ka la. You know, these are all the Hebrew characters. Okay? And then you have the Shah, right? The Shah character. And see, these are words. When they tell you that these, like the Shah is a uh, Shin, that's not the character. That's a word. Ta, right? And then we're going to get into the last character, Ayan. Ayan is a word, but that's not the pronunciation of the actual character. Okay? So let's get the character, which is the next character in the name of, of, of uh, the name of the Savior, Sha, or well, they pronounce Shin, okay? Or well, Shin, which... Let me see here. Sha. And these are all the different words. They have Sha in them. Okay. Sha. So that takes you to. Here we go. So the pronunciation of the, the Sha character or, or the Shin character in the Hebrew, okay? So it says, I know that the pronunciation of the shin varies, varies between S, S as in sun, or sh as in shoe, okay? Which is not an S because there's already a character for S as in sun. So it, the next meaning would be sh, okay? And I'm gonna show you. All right. So this is the character sh in the name of the Savior, which they pronounce Shin. Okay. And it takes you to the letter sh. Right? The etymology. So the etymology of this character is what? Sha. This is the Sha. Okay. 
So we have Yah in the name of the Messiah. Okay. Where is it at? Okay, this is it. Right? I want to get the correct one. All right, here we go. So we have the correct characters, the correct name. I broke it down. You have Yah, Ha, Wa, Sha, Sha, okay? So it's pronounced Sha, and it makes a sh sound, as in hush or shush, okay? So the sh, right, the sh sound. Right, it takes you to the sh sound. Okay. The sh sound. So that's the correct way of pronouncing this character, sha. So we have yaha wa sha, right? But wait, we also have this character, the last character. So Yahawasha, and they pronounce this character as Ayin. Ayin. Okay. Here we go. So the last character. Is this character here? Ayin. All right. Which it means the origins. The letter is derived from Proto Semitic I. Okay. Ayin means I. And the Phoenician letter, which is the ancient Hebrew, the Paleo Hebrew, had the shape of a circle or oval. Clearly representing representing an eye. Okay. So when you look up the eye in the Hebrew, it takes you the Hebrew word for eye is ayin. Remember, they'll tell you the character is pronounced ayin, but it's his own word. It's three, it's a three Hebrew character word. I Ya and the Na, which is pronounced Ayin, okay? Or well, they say Ayin, but it's Ayin because it goes back to I, okay? Like your eye, your eyeball, that's a Hebrew word, I, okay? Or Ayin, all right? And I'm going to show you see the Phoenician or the Hebrew character is what? It's an I, like an O. And it's also where you get the letter O from in the English in the English alphabet, but it's pronounced O. It's not pronounced like it was back in the Hebrew. But that character goes back to the Hebrew, which looks like an eyeball. Okay, so now the ayin in Hebrew, the Hebrew noun ayin, pronounced ayin, is the biblical Hebrew word for both eye and spring. Um, and then it says, because eyes naturally occur in pairs on most animals, the plural of ayin eyes appears in a special dual form ayan yum because the the word yum here 
uh, yum is plural for the Hebrew language. Like if you want to say brothers, you say, for brother, you say at, and for brothers, you say akyum. For angels or gods or powers, like if you say God, one God, you say Allah. For plural, you'll say Allahayim, which is where you get the word Elohim from. Okay? So the correct, so when you break down this whole three character word and you break down the actual pronunciation of this one character here, you have the pronunciation of I. Okay? I, which goes back to what? I, like your eyeball. So now, let's put all the pronunciation of the characters for the name of who the world calls Jesus. Let's put his Hebrew name together in pronunciation. Okay? So when you pronounce this correctly, all right? His name is Yah. Hold on, let me make this bigger. Took it down, so. so you pronounce this Yah. Ha. Hold on. Yah. Ha. Wa. Sh. I. Yah. Ha. Wa. Sh. I, Yahawa Shai, Yahawa Shai, Yahawa Shai. So we broke down Yahawa to get the pronunciation for the first three characters, Yahawa in the name of the Savior. Then we just broke down the last two, Yahawa Shai, Yahawa Shai. Okay? So the pronunciation is out there. You're not going to get it from Esau or the churches. You're not going to get it from the uh, the seminary schools. You're not going to get it from vocab alone. You're definitely not going to get it from uh, uh, General Bishop, Bishop General Nathaniel with the IUIC, right? Because they don't go into the Hebrew, although he has a bishop in his congregation as Yawasop, and Yawasop is the Paleo-Hebrew pronunciation of the name Joseph. Why is he not Bishop Yosef or Joseph? If you're Nathaniel, why is he not Yosef? Why is he Yawasak? So there's a conflict and a hypocrisy when it comes to the Hebrew, when it comes to the names and the Hebrew language and the IUIC. So I wouldn't follow that group. Okay? But Great Millstone, GMS, we're going to go through and teach you according to the Holy Spirit where we can find what the Lord gives us to give you the correct names of the Heavenly Father and His Son. And I pretty much broke down both names in this lesson here. So you have Yah, Ha, Wa, Shai. Yah, Ha, Wa, Shai. Okay? Yah, Ha, Wa, Shai. Okay. See where it says, is it Yeshua or Yahusha? No, it's not Yeshua. It's not Yahusha. It's not Yahushua. All right. It is Yahweh Shai. They keep taking you to the wrong thing. Let me see here. Yeah. Right, it, which means he delivers, okay? Yahawa, Yahawa Shai. Perhaps, look, it tells you what, it tells you the etymology from Hawashai, Hosea, Hosea, Hawashai, 
and the addition of, it should be just Yah, which means he, okay? Then you have other variations, Hawa, Hawa Shayai, that's wrong. Uh, Yasha, Yasha, Yashai, yeah, why that's that's wrong, which is okay. Well, that goes into Isaiah's name. Isaiah mean a name means uh, uh, how it saves, right? Let's get that. Let's see, yeah, Yeshaya, Yeshaya, see, Yeshaya, Yeshaya, Yahweh is salvation, Yahweh is saves. That's Isaiah's name, all right, but going into. Joshua, or who the world calls Jesus in the Greek, Jesus, right? His name is Yahawashai. And this Yahawashai deliverer, which is the same name, of, which is the same name as Hosea, King Hosea, or the prophet Hosea, Yahawashai. We show you that you have different men with the same name, you know? I just like today, you know how many Johns and Michaels and Davids people know? But this Yahweh Shai, he is the deliverer to save his people from his sins. Okay? Even the Yiddish will tell you, Yahweh Shai, among the small hats. Proper noun. Remember, Apostle Gabal went in the proper nouns? So, Yahweh Shai. A male given name equivalent to English, Joshua. Biblical, Joshua, the son of Nun, judge of Israel, following Moses. Why? Because Joshua was the one to deliver physically the children of Israel out of the wilderness into the land of Canaan. Which, which that name there really being a precursor to what Yahweh Shah was going to do when he uh when he comes on the scene, the savior. Okay, and Joshua was also a book in the scriptures. So now we know how to truly pronounce the name of the Savior without a shadow of a doubt. I went into the Hebrew characters, the language, the linguistics, the pronunciations, and I pray that this was edifying. You know, you can refer to this lesson. This is a little bit deeper than I believe we've done in the past, that I've done in the past. But, you know, you grow in the spirit, you know. I've been in this thing a number of years now, so, you know, the spirit led me to another layer of um, of getting the correct pronunciation. So I pray that this was edifying. The name of the Savior is Yahweh Shai. The name of his father is Yahweh. Uh, but in, in correct order, I want to give all praises, all glory, all honors unto Yahweh, Bahasham, meaning in the name, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, the correct name of the Savior, Bahasham, Raka Kodash, Spirit Holy, meaning the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the 144,000, the rest of the whole four elect. Once again, I pray this is edifying. Shalom.